Amen? Amen. Amen. Psalms 103. If you don't have a Bible, raise your hand. We'll get you a Bible. We want you to make sure you come along with us. And then we're going to go to Matthew chapter, um, chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Um, I started this message last week. I know, see, the time go by very fast, but I ask that you pray much uh, for all of us. Amen? Amen. How many have been practicing the language of forgiveness this week? Be honest with yourself. How many have been practicing forgiveness? You need a Bible, raise your hand. Amen? Raise your hand. How many have practiced the, the language of speaking forgiveness this week? Raise your hand. Amen? Now, I'm not saying it was easy. And I'm not saying that you overcome everything that took place in your life. All I'm trying to get you to understand is that when you start speaking the language that I love to talk, forgiveness, amen? amen. And I'm talking about right down the line. I'm not just talking about forgetting it and forgetting about it. The Spirit had revealed to me that even though uh, the Scripture is very clear about teaching about forgiveness, only God can forget. When I say forget, even though we practice trying to forget something somebody done to us, we have to work on that part, amen? amen? So I ask that you pray much for me as God give me the message. Now, Psalm 103, uh, everybody look to somebody and say, I'm still learning, I'm still learning. To, speak the to speak the language of forgiveness. forgiveness. Now, last week I wasn't fair to you because I didn't tell you what forgiveness is all about. We use the word all the time, but we don't really know what the meaning means. So I'm going to give you the meaning. Forgiveness uh, is the act of setting someone free from an obligation to you that is a result of a wrongdoing against you. Now, I'm going to say it again. Forgiveness is the act of setting someone free from an obligation to you that is a result of a wrong deed against you. If somebody did something wrong to you, and Jesus was very clear that in the last days, he said, woe to whom offenses may come. Ain't that right? Amen. Now, it's one thing if you offend people. It's another thing if you are offended. But like Peter, when according to Jewish custom, uh, it was three times that you could forgive a person for the wrong they done. But Peter buffed it up and said seven times. Uh, uh, Lord, how often must I forgive my brother to seven times? In other words, he doubled it and he added one to it. But Jesus blew that out of the water and told him uh, very clearly, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Amen. Why is this so important? Because the power that God has given into your hand, the power to forgive. Look to somebody and say, put the past, put the past behind, you behind you and give the gift of forgiving. Oh, yeah. Look to somebody else and say, put the past, put the past behind, you behind you and give the gift, give the gift of forgiving. Oh, yeah. You know to forgive is a great gift? Yeah. When someone is bound uh, to owe you an apology and say, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Sometimes people don't know how to come up out of their uh, zone to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, I apologize. But sometimes their actions or deed may try to make up the difference. Yeah. Yeah. But you still got a problem because you really haven't said, I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, I'm sorry if I did you wrong. See, because when you don't apologize, when you don't say I'm sorry, the result of that lack of apology can result in, into what they call a spiritual disease. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, I'm going to hit you hard today. See, when Christ forgave you, he paid your, for, for your forgiveness. He paid it in full. Somebody say amen. amen. And then he gave you power of faith to forgive. But I'm here to warn the church today. Uh -huh. You and I got to be very, very careful. Right. Yes. Be aware of the spirit of unforgiving. Amen. There's a spirit in the land that's unforgiving. Uh -huh. It don't want to admit that it's done wrong. Amen. It's associated with animosity and retaliation. It is a bitterness that ingrains the soul and destroys it at the roots. 
It changes the very cellular structure of a way a man or woman might think. Are y'all with me this morning? You breathe in and you breathe out cruelty and grudges and you carry it from day to day, from week to week, and from year to year, never knowing what really happened and what went wrong in the first place. But I'm here to tell you, it would behoove you today if you begin to learn to speak this language called forgiveness. Oh, come on, somebody. You're made of clay, and you're always going to wind up doing or saying something wrong. God is the one that made you. God knows what you're made out of. And he knows your shortcomings. Here we learn today that the God we serve is a forgiving God. Oh, I didn't hear you say amen now. You are like you don't believe in the God we serve is a forgiving God. And he's a merciful God. Oh, you ought to shout about uh, praising God today for what he has done for you. You could have got caught up in the mix and destroyed in your hard heartedness. Well, I'm going to talk about that too. I'm going to talk about the unpardonable state. There is an unpardonable sin that Jesus had to correct the Pharisees, but I'm going to talk about the unpardonable state. I want you to be patient with me today. Here in Psalm 103, and then we're going over to uh, Matthew chapter 12. Psalm 103. Everybody look at somebody and say, I'm learning. I'm learning. The language, the language of, forgiveness. of forgiveness. Why is this so important? He says in Psalm 103, bless the Lord. Amen. Everybody say, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. oh, my soul. And all, and all that's, within that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Now, that's hard to bless the Lord when you got all kind of things happening. When all kind of things are going on in your life, you got to push all that mess aside and get over it. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Look at somebody and say, build a bridge. And get over it. Whatever animosity or problem that people have with you, build a bridge and get over it and go on with the gift of forgiveness in your life. Ask God to give you power that you can recognize and see through all the mess. Get over it and go on with your life. You ain't got time to be weighed down or bogged down or troubled by the cares of this world because they will wear you to no end. Bless the Lord. Everybody say, Bless the Lord. My soul. Oh, my soul and all and that's within me. That's within Bless, his Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his what? Yes. I've read this before and you read it with me, but I won't, I came back to this because this is what God gave me. Why do we need to stay focused on God's benefits? Because God got great benefits for you. Look at somebody and say, God got great, great benefits for you. There are no better benefits than the benefits that God got for you and me. You might have a job. You might be retired. You might be planning on retiring, and you're trying to put all your benefits and things together that you can enjoy your life. But I'm here to tell you, what's better than retiring in this life is having eternal life. Somebody say amen. And you ought to thank God for those benefits that's in that package deal for once you got saved. Because when God saved you, he gave you a package, a benefit package that will last you for all eternity. Somebody say amen. amen. Verse 3 says, who forget all thy, who for what? Who forgiveth. He did what? Everybody read verse 3 out loud together. One, two, three. Hey! 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 Hallelujah! Not only did he forgive me, but he healed me. That told me he has power of great atonement. Power to forgive. Power to heal. Power to deliver. I love that language. Lord, keep on speaking that language to my heart. Amen. Who will give all thy iniquities. All every wrong you could have ever done or have done. Uh, God said, I can forgive you. And on top of forgiving you, I'm the one that heals you. 
you talking about cherry on your ice cream, cherry on your whipped cream. I'm talking about a deep dish, holy dish. Well, God said, I'm going to heal you and deliver you. And God said in verse 4, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. God told the nation of Isaiah to tell the nation of Israel, why are you were covered and struggling in your blood? God said, I'm the one that reached down and touched you and said, you shall live and not die. It is God that has power to deliver you. Amen. Isn't the God we serve a wonderful God? Amen. Verse 5 says, who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Come on, somebody. Sometimes sometime I feel like I'm 85. Come on, somebody. But the other time I feel like a young buck. Come on, somebody. Especially when I know I got to cross the street. You know what I mean? Oh, come on, somebody. And I feel that renewed strength like an eagle. The Lord said in verse 6, The Lord executed righteousness and judgment and all that will oppress. He's the one set forth execution. He maketh known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord, in verse 5, 8 says, the Lord is merciful. Oh, somebody say, Lord, thank you. The Lord is merciful. Not only is he merciful, he's gracious. And I want to thank God for being slow to anger. And along with being slow to anger, he's plenty in mercy. You got to thank God that God don't get mad real quick. Like you and I. Come on, somebody. But that he is a merciful God. Thank God for a forgiving spirit. He says, he will not always chide. Huh. Neither will he keep his anger forever. God always is going to be upset, or mad, or angry. But he says in verse 10, he have not dealt with us after our sin. Nor has he rewarded us according to our iniquity. Y'all have to thank God for that. I'm Amen. Amen. David said, when I done wrong, I suppose been destroyed and condemned and lost in the law parts of hell, but the Lord God never dealt with me that way. As wrong as I was and as wrong as I might have been, that God I serve is a merciful God. And he's a forgiving God. And he's plenty of mercy to all of them that will call upon him. He said, call on me. Jeremiah, tell my people, just call on me. Just take a moment of your life and just call on me. And God said, I will answer you. And I will show you great great and mighty and mighty things that thou knowest not. God said, I got things you don't even know about. Yet I can reveal them to you. Verse 11 says, for as the heavens is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. Somewhere in the midnight hour, somewhere while you're sleeping on your bed, the angels get together and they run to and fro in the earth. And God cry, renew mercy every day. Renew mercy every day. And mercy and the angels are spreading across the land. It's spreading across your bed. It's spreading across your life. Mercy is renewed every day. For David got up and said, praise be to God for his mercy is renewed every day. I don't have to worry about yesterday. I ain't got to worry about tomorrow. God got me set for the day. And his mercy today is good enough for me. Maybe that ain't enough for you to shout about. But when I think about the goodness of the Lord and what he done for me, my soul cried out, hallelujah, thank 
thank God for saving me. Look at somebody and say, I hope you're getting and I hope you're learning the language of forgiveness. He says in verse 12, as far as the east is from the west. Now he told you in verse 11, as far as the heaven is from the earth. And now he's telling you as far as the east is from the west. Ain't that what he said? So far has he removed our transgression from us. Isn't that wonderful to know? There ain't nothing you said or done or can do that can get you in trouble because of the mercy of God and the loving kindness of God. And when God and Jesus died on the cross and God took your sin and he took them and threw them in the sea, what sea did he throw in the sea of forgiveness? And ain't nobody out there fishing for your sin but Satan trying to throw it back up in your face. But you can bind him in the name of Jesus and say, God has delivered me from that and no longer am I in bondage. So let Satan fish all he want. And when he come to you with rotten fish whose eyes are sunk back in his head and whose scales are smelling, you can say that that don't belong to me because God got rid of that a long time ago. Come on, somebody. You've been covered by the blood. You've been covered by his anointing. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Forever and forever. My, my, my. As far as the east from the west, God said, I'll push your sins far from each other. They won't see each other, can't touch each other. That's how far he moved your iniquity and your transgression. Don't tell me the God we serve ain't a good God. Like as a father pitted his children, so the Lord pitted them that fear him. For he know our frame. He remember that we are dust, nothing but clay. You got to thank God he made you out of the clay. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. As for man, his days are what? Amen. They're like grass. Mm -hmm. As a flower of the field, so he flourished. For the wind passes over it, and it, go, it is gone. Amen. And the place thereof shall not know it no more. But in verse 17, he says, everybody said, but, but. the mercy of the Lord. But the mercy of God is everlasting. Don't you thank God? Don't you, don't you thank God for not running out of mercy? You might run out of milk, you might run out of sugar, you might run out of flour, you might run out of gas. Come on, somebody. You might run out of a whole lot of things. But you ought to thank God that his mercy is everlasting. It never runs out. It never empty. It never incomplete. You ought to give God the praise. Whatever you're going through, you ought to give God the praise. You see, when you learn to praise God from the bottom of your heart, from the depths of your soul, it confuses the devil. It confuses the enemy. He don't know what you're praising God for. All he knows is you're making a joyful noise. You want to get the devil confused and mad? Start praising God. He's going to start looking around. He's going to start wondering why she's so happy. Why he's so happy. Why is he praising God? What's he so excited about? I got Jesus. And Jesus is the sweetest name. We got to learn to praise God so the young men can see us praising. We got to learn to praise God so the young women can see us praising. I love it when I go home and the twins sometime in their crib. Oh, they just praising God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, they tearing it up too, you know. And I'm looking at, you know, I get right with them. Praise the Lord. They stop and look at me. You got to start somewhere. You might want to start them right in the bed or start them right in the womb. And when they get in the cradle and when they get in the bed, you can praise him anyhow. 
But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Unto them that fear him and his righteousness unto the children's children. Isn't that wonderful to know? Verse 18 says, so such as keep is his covenant. You keep that commandment. That is your point of contact. The word of God is your point of contact. That's your covenant, knowing God's word, and keep his command to, to do them. Verse 19 says, and the Lord prepare his throne. The Lord prepares his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rule over all. That's enough to make you sit up on the side of the bed. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. He didn't tell you and me to bless him. Now he's telling the angels. What he's here to angel to do? Bless the Lord. All he what? They excel in strength. That do his commandments. Hearken to the voice of his word. Verse 21 says, Bless the Lord. All ye host. Bless the Lord. All ye ministers of his. That do his pleasure. Come on, somebody. Bless the Lord. All his works. In all his places. In all his dominion. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. says, because my people are going through something, I'm going to give you a garment. This garment will cover you. It's a garment of praise. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with or what you're up against or what kind of problems you got at home or on the job or what you're dealing with on the street. God said, I'll put an unction. I'll put an oracle. I'll anoint you with the power of holiness that will rule and reign. I'll give you a garment. A garment of praise. To praise him through anything. To praise him through everything. To praise him your body is going through. To your finances are going through. What folks are treating you like. Trying to scandalize your name. God said, but that's all right. I'm going to give you a praise. I'm going to give you a garment. And your soul, your soul will cry out. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that's within me. Bless his holy name. You see, when you learn to praise God, you'll get rid of resentment. You'll get rid of hatred. When you learn to praise God, you'll get rid of anger. You'll get rid of revenge. You'll get rid of that old grudge. Because God is replacing it with a garment. God is replacing it with an anointing. Hallelujah. It'll give you a new breath of life. When you learn to praise God and worship God, it'll get you through retaliation. Hallelujah. It'll get you through the malice. Yeah. It'll get you through the hatred. Yeah. It'll help you go through bitterness. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. God will give you a sweet envelope yeah. that will encamp about you. Yeah. 
and take you through every trial and every tribulation. Hallelujah. When you learn to praise it, God will give you a garment that will help you through animosity. Put the past behind you. That was an old creature thing. Look around at somebody and say, you're a new creature now. Put them old things behind you. Put them old ways behind you. You are a new creature. Stop holding on to that old junk. They ain't doing nothing but weighing you down. The Bible said, lay aside every sin and every weight that so easily besets you. Weight ain't nothing but variation. Weight, uh, variation and weight ain't nothing but weighing you down that you can't praise God. Look at somebody and say, I hope you're learning the language of forgiveness. It's a tough language to speak when people treat you bad. When they call you out your name. When they cuss and fuss you out. Come on, somebody. When they treat you real bad. Come on, somebody. Oh, but I'm here to tell you today. You know, there was a time in my life I tried to hold on to my daddy. But my daddy is gone. There was a time in my life I tried to hold on to my mama. But my mama is gone. But all along that I was going through, God would let me know, you need to hold on to me. Come on, somebody. Whatever you're dealing with, you got to hold on to Jesus, regardless of what the circumstances. Oh, tears may come to your eyes. You may lose a night of sleep. Or your heart may be heavy. But I'm here to tell you, when you learn the dynamics of the language to forgive, oh, the power of God is right there. And the anointing of God is right there. And I've learned a long time ago, it is the anointing. It is the anointing that will break the yoke. It is the anointing. Look around and somebody said, it's the anointing that will break the yoke. What are you saying, Pastor? What are you saying? I'm saying when you have your egg, if you don't like them scramble, but you like them sunny side up, you tell the man, break the yoke. I want them over hard. Come on, somebody. Because you know you want to spread it out. You want the anointing to spread that mess out and give you power that you can deal with whatever shows up. <laughs> the message of forgiveness. The message of forgiveness. Look at somebody said the message of forgiveness is a living parable. You got to live this every day. I'm not talking about you ain't got to deal with circumstances. You got to deal with them, but you got to have the grace to deal with them. You can forgive. Come on, somebody. And even try to work on forgetting it. But somehow God don't make no fools. Paul said, I would not have you ignorant, brother. Come on, somebody. You ain't got to be ignorant about nothing. You see, you can, you know, I told you last week, I ain't preached a message on you. But I'm here to tell you just so you don't forget that peace is my choice of weapon. I tell you, I love prayer. And prayer can get me through. Thing, but I also love peace because peace is my choice of weapon. It is my weapon that when others treat you bad, they know they treated you bad, they're looking down at you, they're talking about you, but peace will allow you to look right through them. Peace will give you power that they're worried about. Hey, I didn't get to him, I didn't get to her. Something must be wrong. Ain't nothing wrong, it's just a piece of God. Jesus said, my peace, I leave with you. Not as the world giveth, but I give it to you. A peace that will surpass us. What do you mean? I treated him bad. I treated her bad. And it looked like she's still the same. She still loved the Lord. She's still living holy. She's still walking right. She's still praising God. I want her. And the devil is confused because you're still praising God. Amen. 
See, you, you understand, the devil can use anybody. Why are they in the family or their loved ones, somebody close or dear, they'll use them to cause dissimulation or cause argument in the family. And even though you forgive them, don't mean you are a fool. Come on, somebody. Wait a minute. Let me tell you a story that you already know about, but I'm going to tell you what God told me to tell you. Come on, somebody. Oh, I went over to the Old Testament. And there's a prophet by the name of Jose. Uh -huh. Are y'all familiar with him? Amen. You can call him Brother Jose. Yeah. And while he was prophesying and speaking to the northern tribe of Israel, the Bible said that God told him. Yeah. Oh, my God. God told him, Jose, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go down. And I want you to marry a prostitute. Wait a minute. Oh, y'all looking at me crazy now. Now let me get this straight. Here's a holy man of God. A righteous man of God. One of the 12 minor prophets of God. Anointed by God to preach to the northern tribe that if they don't change their wicked way, God said, I'm going to bring destruction on them. But God said, wait a minute. I want you to do something. I'm going to give you a living parable. I want you to go down to the temple. And there at the temple, you're going to find a woman by the name of Goma. Come on, somebody. But when it's all said and done, she's going to be Mrs. Jose. Come on, somebody. All your friends and relatives. Come on, somebody. Neighbors and relatives down the street and around the corner saying that's a holy man of God. But he's down there fooling around with the prostitute. What kind of man is him? Come on, somebody. Some people want to question your integrity. Some people want to question what you're living by. Some people want to know what you're standing for. I'm here to tell you, when you've got the forgiveness in your heart, God will give you power over everything everybody say. You ain't got to worry about what nobody say. You ain't got to worry about what nobody do. It doesn't matter how they look at you or how they ridicule you. You want to be just saying the Lord thy God. Wait a minute. There's a lot of ground to cover. I didn't know this, but there are three forms of prostitute. There's a street walker. Come on, somebody. There's a high class call girl. Don't y'all look at me like that. And then that was what they called the temple prostitute that worshiped in the house of Baal, who was a Canaanite deity god that the children of Israel and the, Can uh, the Canaanite nation worshiped on a regular basis. And this god, Baal, that they worshiped was the god of fertility. Are y'all with me on this? They believed that when he, when he performed sex in the, in the stratosphere, that his semen brought forth food in the field, food in the flock, and food in the family. Are y'all with me on this? And they worship this God. But God said, I'm a jealous God. And there shall be no other God before me. And the children of Israel were worshiping this God. And God was making a comparison of the nation of Israel worshiping after this God. They were committing polygamy. They were committing a spiritual adultery by worshiping the God of Baal. But God got mad with them. And God told Goma, I want you to be a living parable. You are a man of God. Go marry Goma. I don't care what they say or what they think. Amen. Now, wait a minute. You mean to tell me a good-looking single, decent-looking prophet anointed by God? God would tell him to do something like that? I know it was a marriage made in heaven, but it looked like an earthly disaster. Are y'all with me on this? But when God tells you to do something, come on, somebody, you can throw up your index finger and say, excuse me, I got to do what God tells me to do. Come on, somebody. They might get mad with you. They might get upset with you. But remember, your reward don't come from me. Your reward comes from the Lord. Now, y'all know the story about her. So I'm just going to give you the highlight. This man, you know when you get married, you got to consum consummate a marriage. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You don't know who this woman, this, this prostitute, are uh, going to be with. Uh -huh. But she was whoring after every man. Uh -huh. 
It doesn't tell you what kind of prostitute she was. Other than that, she was down at the temple. So most likely she was a temple, uh, what they call a temple uh, priestess. She was having sex with even the men of Israel because they wanted to increase their flock, they wanted to increase their family, and they wanted to increase uh, their family life. And they figured the only way they can get it is they go down to the temple and mess around with the temple prostitute. Don't y'all get mad with me. I mean, they did it out in the open. They did it on the rooftop. They wanted Baal to see that they was intimate with these gods that they served, and then all will come to pass what he spoke. But the God we serve don't deal in mess like that. Come on, somebody. You might want to get in the praise. You know where I'm going with this. Some of y'all are in a rotten life. Some of y'all was in the prostitution. Some of y'all was in the homosexuality. Some of y'all were committing adultery. But God, grace, and God, mercy. I didn't come and play no game with you. Jose had a powerful message. He was minor, but he was pitching in the major leagues. Come on, somebody. He was out in the big league, proclaiming the gospel in the last and evil days. Look at somebody and say, you better learn. You better learn the language of forgiveness. Oh, wait a minute. This man married this woman. Everybody in the neighborhood talking about him like they talk about you. Talk about you like a dog. Call you everything but a child of God. Say all kinds of things about you. Say you ain't no good, you ain't up to no good, you ain't gonna be no good. Mama and daddy say you ain't gonna be no good. Your grandparents say you ain't gonna be no good. But let them talk all they want. All you gotta do is remember the Lord is on my side. Whom shall I free? The Lord is on my side. Whom shall I be afraid? If the Lord be with me, then who can be against me? I got the Lord on my side. He's in my place. I can give him the praise. I can give him the glory. Others might not like it. Others might not worship it. Others might not praise it. But I'm going to take a little time in my busy life. I'm going to take a little time to give God the praise. Y'all know the story. This man, Gomer him was married. Everybody around town, uptown, downtown, midtown, was talking trash about uh, Jose married to Gomer. He must have been out of his mind. But God had a message to send to the people of God. Are y'all with me on this? It doesn't matter whether you like me or show up or not, I'm going to still preach. Come on, somebody. You can get mad at me and come from Sunday to every other Sunday. It doesn't matter. When you show up, I'm still going to be here. Why? Because man didn't call me. Man didn't anoint me. When God anoints you, you got to be thus said the Lord. Whether they like you or not. Whether they appreciate you or not. Whether they're on board with you or not. Whether they're going with you or not, you got to keep on preaching anyhow. Now, Baal and all his false prophets were pimping the nation of Israel. Uh-huh. They was abusing Goma. Yeah. And this woman left her husband and went after other men. Uh-huh. But like a good neighbor, come on, somebody. More than State Farm were with him, Jesus was with him. Come on, somebody. I'm going to tell you, when you got Jesus, it's better than State Farm. Come on, somebody. It's better than the neighbor next door. Are you seeing down the street? In case you didn't know it, you thought Delta was ready, but Jesus said, I'm like Delta, I'm ready anytime. Ready whenever you are. When you're ready to come to him, he's going to meet you. Wait a minute. They were dealing with what they call a fool's crop. A fool's crop. You know what that means? They were trying to sow the wind. And when you sow the wind, the Bible said in Hosea 8 and 7, when you sow the wind, you reap the whirlwind. That's what they call a fool's crop. You can't sow no, you can't, you can't plant no wind in the ground. 
And if you could, what's going to come out is nothing but a whirlwind. It's nothing but a fool's cock. When you're worshiping anything other than the truth and living God, it's a fool's worship. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Y'all came to get some medicine today. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Oh, I know you like to go to CVS and Walgreens. You stop over at Cornfield Pharmacy, but you stop by 122 to pick up this message today. You got your medicine today. You got your word today. All you want to do is partake of it and taste of it and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You can try it for yourself. Everybody else can try, try it for yourself. Wait a minute. I told you earlier, beware of an unforgiving spirit. It's a dangerous spirit. Jose went looking for his wife. Everywhere she went, he went looking. He had two sons and one daughter. And after every, every child, now wait a minute, it was mama's baby, but daddy's baby? I don't care what you think about me. I ain't just got saved. I've been on board for 40 years. I ain't forgot where God brought me from. You ain't got to worry about me. This woman ain't got to worry about me. You ain't got to worry about me. If you need me, you call me. And she don't not help me show up. This man went looking for his wife. All downtown, he was everywhere. You seen Goma? No, last time I saw her, she was going in a building with a man. You seen Goma? Last time I saw her, she was downtown shopping at Filene's. Last time I seen her, she was over there stopping shop. I think they didn't straighten their problem out. But anyway, you know, every time he was looking for her, she was somewhere else. And finally, when he caught her up with her, he had to buy her back. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying, even though she backslid, God said, I'm married to the backslider. Even though the nation backslides, even though you're backslide, God said, I still love you. God said, I still forgive you. And some of y'all know this story for all. And some of y'all say, that message ain't for me, that message is for them. Look around and somebody said, no, that message is for you. You can sit up here and look cute if you want to. But you're bound by this word. You sit up and hear me and think I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, he just said he's all right. You know, he's all right. I ain't got to be all right. Come on, somebody. You, you got to figure it for yourself. You got to figure it in your own mind. Do you think I would waste my time, my energy, if God didn't have an investment in my soul? He has an investment in me and what I proclaim to do. That's why it behooves me. It has to be aware of an unforgiving spirit. Because if you hold that in, it'll eat your life. It'll mess up your mind. It'll mess up your thought. You'll be angry all the time. You'll be rushing here and there and everywhere, trying to satisfy everybody. Wait a minute. This government was everywhere. Jose found her. They had one child, two child, three child. They had two boys and a girl. And every time they had a child, it wasn't even sure if it was his child or not. But yet he was committed to the marriage. Are y'all with me on this? You don't understand. God is committed to you. God is committed to your relationship. God is committed to your soul. God is willing to go all out and do what he can to save you and to keep you safe. He'll beat back the enemy. He'll bind the spirit. He'll cast out demons. Oh, yes, he'll do it for you. You can be saved if you want to be saved. You can stay saved if you want to be saved. But if you want to pray in sin, you better be aware of the enemy because he's going to build something up in you. He's going to cause you to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Wait a minute. This living parable, messages of forgiveness, this reconciliation. This man of God, anointed by God, married a temple prostitute. 
Come on, somebody. Did what God told him to do. It don't look right in the eyesight of God. It's a bizarre marriage. It's a strange thing that God is doing here. Why would God tell a man to do this? Because he was doing a parable. He was doing a paraphrase compared to the nation of Israel pouring after other God, worshiping other God, polygamy and spiritual adultery, and running away from the true and living God. And God said all day long, all day long, all night long, I stretched out my hand. Stretched out my hand. When you was in trouble, I showed up. When you were struggling in your blood, when you was in the heat of the flame, I'm the one that reached down in the fire and pulled you out. Look at somebody say, You better learn to speak the language. Of forgiveness. I don't know, Pastor, if I could forgive that man. I don't know if I could forgive that woman. But if God for forgave your butt, if God forgave your messed up self, God took your mess and gave you a message. If God took your test and gave you a testimony, come on somebody, then you ought to be able to reach out and touch other lives with the power of forgiveness and speak the language that they understand and then you can draw them to Christ because he said, with loving kindness, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Oh, I know the time they're going by. Yes, that's true. So he went after her. God forgave her. The same way Jose, every time she went, God brought her back. Every time Gomer went somewhere, Jose went after her. When God said, go after your wife, like I'm going after Israel. Come on, somebody. What a wonderful love. What a caring love. It ain't how many men she been with and the act and the sin that she done. It was the loving kindness of the father. It was the loving kindness of the husband. And people begin to understand what kind of love that, that man got that he would go after his wife even though she been with this, that, and everybody. Do you understand where we're going with this? Do you understand the loving kindness, the ponderable love that he had, that even when Christians were preoccupied with worshiping God, the enemy will always try to get you to worship something else. As bizarre and as strange and, and, and not understandable as that possibly can be, why would God tell a man to go and love a temple prostitute or a prison, a princess? Why? Because God is trying to convey a message to his people even to this day, even to Israel. He said, with another nation will I call Israel to be jealous. Amen. Talking about the Gentile world. Amen. For I have put righteousness in their hearts. Amen. Wait a minute. I'm only halfway there. Amen. I'm getting ready to get into your psychic now. Turn to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. This is where Jesus straightened everybody out about the unpardonable sin. Blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. I mean, it got on me. I couldn't even almost go to sleep at night. And I said, you mean to tell me, Lord, that can't be if I'm saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit. I know you're doing the work but we're not going to give the devil the credit. See, this is a problem that people think the devil is performing miracles. Are y'all with me on this? I, I, I ain't going to rush this. I want you to read this with me because, you, you know, if I don't do nothing today except for, for read this so you understand. So chapter 12, we're going to start right there at chapter 12, and we're going to start at verse uh, uh, 14. 
Everybody got to say amen. amen. Chapter 12, verse 14. You got it? Amen. Okay. Then the Pharisees went out and they held a council. They held a council. A council against him. Against, him. against who? Against Jesus. How they might destroy or translate it, how they might kill him. 15 says, but when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from this, and a great multitude followed him, and he healed them all. Everybody say, he healed, he healed them, all. them all. And he charged them that they should not make him known. Don't tell nobody I heal you. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Elijah, the prophet, saying, Behold, I see, I'm sorry. Isaiah the prophet said, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentile. You see that? And this is where it gets interesting. He shall not strive, quarrel or fuss or fight, not cry out. Shall any man I'm sorry, cry out, neither shall any man hear his voice in the street. I love verse 20. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flack shall he not quench, till he sent forth judgment and victory. Oh, my Lord. You, you, you have no clue what he's talking about. And in the name, and in his name, <laughs> That's enough to give God the praise. Amen. You can rock like a, a boat on the ocean. Amen. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Amen. Then were brought unto him one that was possessed with a devil. Now listen carefully now. He was possessed with a devil, and the devil had him dumb and blind, a blind and dumb, and he healed him insomuch that the blind and the dumb both spake and he saw. A double blessing. Yes. Now listen. Verse 23, he says, And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? You know what they say? Isn't he the anointed one? The Messiah? Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit and it also inspire your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O oh Lord, from our sins, but, O oh Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O oh Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O oh Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O oh Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.